click and play that click that play button yeah you might have yeah i can see you neil yeah i should be live as well Yeah, yeah. I should be live as well. All right, okay, great. So I can come off uh, Discord then. Hi, everyone. I'm hoping that I've gone live and I'm hoping that you can, can everybody see me for, uh, talking from the Hill House um, classroom? So that's what, I, that's what I'm hoping you can see anyway. So I don't know if somebody can confirm that. I, I, I've still started a bit early, so I'm waiting for people to start. Oh yeah, okay, great. You, you, yeah, well you can see me, okay, good, good. I'll just give people a few minutes to to connect to the stream. Wait for a few uh, few few thousand viewers to 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 connect up. I've managed to get into Hill House to do this stream. Just just don't tell Bruce. That's all. Okay, so I'll I'll make a start. Um, today's um, lesson is based on something that we did um, as part of the Cyber Wales uh, group that myself and Clive have been starting to go to. It's um, and it's a I call it more of a club than a group because it um, helps us to learn cyber security exercises. It's not so much talking shop, it's more of a, a club where we do actually do exercises and learn about hacking and things. Um, so what, what, what we do is uh, we do particular exercises and um, they're based on Capture the Flag. Um, Capture the Flag is uh, a lot of security exercises. Our, it's actually a competition where you go through uh, a number of escalating uh, exercises of, of more and more difficult levels and um, each time you solve a problem each time you hack into something you um, you, you get um, a code or a key or a token and you, you enter that token into a, a system and it gives you points and then the, the person with the most points at the, at the end will uh, win the competition. It's quite often used if you apply for cybersecurity jobs and stuff, you may well be given um, a capture the flag exercise to do as well. So um, I've already sent you all a link to Moodle um, where you could download um, the cybersecurity stuff and you could download the packet tracer file and um, an exercise in Wireshark. So um, you should have downloaded Wireshark. I'm just going to open Wireshark up. Um, Wireshark is a really good tool you can use to um, scan your network for any activities or perhaps other people's networks for activities if you're that way inclined. Um, a good example of where Wireshark was used in college was when we were setting up eSports. All the firewalls are closed down to the minimal amount of ports that we need open. So um, what what we did was I tried, I one of the IT department ran Wireshark against my machine. I opened up Overwatch and Rocket League. It showed what ports I tried to connect to. And then using that information, I was able to, um, or the IT department was able to then see what ports I tried to connect to and it opened up those ports. So, um, I'll show you how it works. So, so today is, is more of a demonstration of how, or some exercises on Wireshark. Um, this was something that we did in the Cyber Wales um, uh, lessons. So it was a big thanks to them for, for producing this. Um, so you've downloaded P, a PCAP files. When you capture a load of data, 
on Wireshark, it gets saved into um, a file and then you can analyze that file. And it's amazing the amount of information you can get back. So if if you open, uh, if you've downloaded the PCAP file, go to file, open, browse to the file and you, it'll, it should open up like this. And you've also got a question sheet. So um, hopefully you can see the screen okay. Um, and we've got some, some questions really based on this. Um, gets, gets harder and harder. So this would have been uh, used in a competition and this would have been um, escalating challenge really. This might have been a, a bit of a warm up exercise. There's, um, I'm hoping that John Davis from Cybersecurity will join us um, in a future talk. Um, there's different types of cybersecurity. There's, it's not just the hacking, there's also forensics and this particular challenge of analyzing a PCAP file, it would come under forensic analysis. So, we're, so yeah, we're lo we're, we've captured some data and we're gonna have a look to see what a potential um, hacker had done. So the first question we've got is, how many packets were captured in this PCAP? So um, if, if you look around here, how many, how many packets were captured? Well, there's thousands of, of packets of all different nature. Some of them will be ARP requests from the router. Some of them will be TCP requests. Some of them will be DHCP requests for, for IP address. Um, there's probably gonna be some DNS requests for um, domain name servers. SMB files for the file systems are obviously SMB, this must have been used for Linux then. So it asks us how many packets were captured. Well, this this would be worth one or two points. And if we look at the bottom of the screen here, you can see 7,444 um, packets were, were captured during, during this scan. So, um, <clears throat> so the answer to the first one is straightforward. Um, 7,444 packets were captured. Then the next one, it says, how many TCP conversations were captured? Um, TCP um, works by, um, I send a request to somebody, um, the, I, get a re, I, get a I get a request saying that, that, that it's been acknowledged and then I, then I send a further response to say, I'm here. And <clears throat> a typical um, uh, way that a hacker would work would be you synchronize. So you, you, you send the message, you get the acknowledgement, and then you drop the connection. So you, you ask, are you there? They say, yes, you are. Then you drop the connection. Um, but by dropping the connection at that point, it stays open. So you can then... Um, Go in, go in and hack and do all the various tools. You, ju you just don't reply any further. So it's like ringing the doorbell when you establish somebody's in, going to hide and then coming back and rob them later, I suppose. Um, so how many TCP conversations were captured? To do that, we just need to go to the, along the top, we've got statistics and conversations. And if we click conversations, a new box will open up. And along the top, we've got TCP. And these are, this is just an analysis of just, just the TCP conversations that we did. And we can see we've got uh, uh, 443 for secure ports. We've got port 80 for the internet. Um, so, but the answer is um, 198. So. TCP conversations was 198. So again, this was just to get us used to using the statistics tab and conversations. And it's just a little way of getting us to, to navigate around. Okay, now we're gonna get into the more uh, perhaps deeper stuff. It says a new user was created on machine. Uh, then they've given us the address. IP address by an attacker. Um, what is the username of the malicious user? So, how do we do this? 
So well, they've given us the IP address. So which was one nine two one five six one six eight fifty six hundred one. So we got a we got a filter along the top of our screen here. So I go in and I type in. There's a, there's a whole series of commands, and I'll post these up later on. So I type in IP dot source equals equals, and I need to put that address in one nine two dot. 168.56.101 and when I hit, hit the enter key it um, it just reduces it down down to 62 as you can see at the bottom of my screen of the 7,444 packets I've managed to narrow it down to 62.8 percent of the of the traffic we did um, and I'm looking for something that stands out out uh, uh, from these 68 packets. So I've got standard um, acknowledgements and messages being sent, but I've got one here that says out of order. So um, if I if I now use a new feature and I, so I'm liking the out of order one. So if I go analyze and follow and TCP stream, you see, you see it's, it's given me a lot of data to look at. Um, if I go back and do IP source, um, and I go analyze and follow and TCP stream, you can see this time, whoever made this challenge has put something in to um, hello, pack analysis is fun. Let's see what else we can do. So I'm on the right tracks, but they've deliberately sent me in the wrong direction. So um, that's that doesn't answer my question about what is the attacker's name and what command did they use. So again, I go to IP source. And when I'm looking through, I can see there's a retransmission. So I tried one or, two, one or two of the out of order ones, it didn't work. So I'm just gonna look, I'm looking for different things and I'm, I'm seeing TCP transmission there. So I go to analyze, follow, I follow the stream. This time it's given me a lot more information. I got lucky the first time, that's why I closed it down. And you can see that the user so so the question is um a user was created and uh, during the attack the user was able to what command did they use to retrieve the system files so you, you do need a bit of linux or well, linux knowledge for this but um the the user that was made was marcel and it looks like they used the, the pass the password was password so they, they, they logged in, they, they, they created a user called Marcel and they got the password. And um, again, this is an example of where Jeff will be happy. You still, we still need to know bits of coding. We still need to understand um, systems. And in Linux, passwords are saved in the, uh, in the, in the, in the directory you see there cat etc shadow so that's where the username was there so the command that they used to look up uh, once they were in the command they used to look up um, user accounts and other users was that command there cat etc shadow so um, user created was Marcel and the command they used was was cat forward slash etc shadow so that so again, each time again, each of these right, we're getting points. Um, and as I say, this is just a basic Wireshark task. It's probably one of the first ones you do. It's like a warm up one. Um, so the next question we've got is a Word document was transferred from 192168 to this address. What is the flag contained in the document? This is uh, an impressive part of um, Wireshark because as we all know data 
is travel around in zeros and ones. That's um, and wire shark is capturing all those uh, zeros and ones. And from those we zeros and ones, we can actually put data back together. So a word document is transferred from one address to another address. So I'm going to carry on using the IP source. So I'm going to do IP dot source. There's a lot of stuff saved in there already because I've already been doing these. Practicing so it doesn't go horribly wrong today. 192.168.131.129. That's that's the um the computer was transferred to, and this was the clue is 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 this word document, and it's a file, so it wouldn't be a DNS request, it wouldn't be um a DHCP request, and it wouldn't be um. As the level five students will know, it wouldn't be a routing, it wouldn't be a routing request either. So it, SMB is the file system in question on the on on the Linux server. So if you click SMB, um, it shows protocol. Uh, somebody's put a message in. CA is short for concatenate. It shows the content of concatenated file list. Okay, good for Jeff at Hill House. Thank you for that. Um, so, and I, I, by going into protocol and, and, the li and the list, I can see we've got SMB files. So, we, a file was transferred or stolen in this case. So I need to look for, for anything that stands out in this. So I've got all the negotiations where it's trying to connect. I've got, um, I'm going through it all. I'm starting to get into the sort of the guts of things here now. The 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 desktop in the files, public documents. So somebody's we're seeing the path that somebody's gone through to browse their way into the system, and we're going through. We got we got they got videos on the desktop. They got pictures. Um, but going through. We're gonna look for something and. Here we've got because we know we're looking for a word document. It's told us that we've got documents secret dot underscore docs dot dot x. So there's the file that we're looking for. So um, so what we do now is now that we're on that line, we've got a file. And we go to export objects and a mental block then file export objects and I'll pick SMB because it's an SMB file we want and it's just gone through and got all the files it can and you see the last file here is secret docs dot doc x so I right click or I click that one I'll click save and I'll save it to my D drive I'll just save it in the root I'm not going to rename it I'm going to click save and I'm going to close and now if I go to my D drive, there's the file. I open it and the Word document opens and it says, this is a super secret document, it must not be shared. And there's the flag. Now normally in a capture the flag competition, you would enter that into a sort of a little program. You enter that, it gives you the points and then you move on to the next challenge. So, <clears throat> So the, um, what is the flag contained in the document? So there it is. I know I'm going through this a bit fast. I did promise everybody around 20 minutes. And I know Jeff is desperate to get back to his lesson. So if you, I will save this stream. I'll, I'll permanently save it. So you can go back and do these exercises. This is just a chance for us to get familiar with Parker Tracer. Uh, uh, Why you shark, sorry. I will do Parker Tracer exercises next. So there's the flag we seek. So we're almost at the end. The next thing that it asks us to do is on January the 16th, um, there's a request to a web server. A HTTP code was given, so all the people on the web classes will know this. And what is the new address for the content requested by the user in the previous question? Okay, somebody wanted to transfer 
some information away. <clears throat> so we've got um, the web server address there. So let's go to ip.src equals equals and we need to go to 23.44.101.254 <clears throat> okay that brings us up a lot of information but the, again the, the clue is always in the question I, I could probably narrow it down to a time as well but the the clue the clue is in the question and um, it's asking for a HTTP file was given and what code was given. So I'm gonna we're looking for HTTP traffic. So I'm just gonna click protocol there, and <clears throat> there and there it is. Three or two moved temporarily, and you can see um, there was a, a me, where's the file being moved to? What is the new address for the content? So. So it makes sense that there's a uh, error for move temporarily when you when you think somebody's trying to move some data around. So the answer to the question, what does the HTTP code given? It's uh, error three or two move temporarily. So if you did a Google search on three or two uh, HTTP error, you'd get moved temporarily. And then. Um, what we need to do then is is follow that stream so we go to analyze follow http stream and it gives us all the information we need there's the error code move temporarily and it says the document has moved so and there's the new address so that's the address the document was moved to and that ties in nicely with what the challenge was the final question for the challenge so that is a very um, quick um, run through of Wireshark and this was an actual um, capture the flag challenge that was used um, it was only the start of the challenge this is something that sort of the experts and especially people applying for jobs with the National Cyber Security Centre and all the rest of it this is the kind of thing that they would do very um, very quickly. This is something that they would fly through, get these points, and then move on to some more difficult challenges. So that bit, that bit of the exercise is finished. I've got um, one more challenge for you to do, and I can see at one point there was over 30 viewers, so thanks everybody for uh, coming in and joining us um, this is these are tough times we're in so hopefully we'll do some more streams like this we'll do some more um, exercises I'm gonna hopefully get John in to do a talk to us as well but I've got one more um, challenge to, uh, to show you um, this is something that uh, Clive Jeff Lee everybody I want everybody to do it I've done it it took me absolutely ages and it's kindly given to us again by Security Wales uh, and the Sands Institute. Now, I don't know if you've all heard of the Sands Institute. It's based in Mumbles of all places. It's a big cyber security center. They produce all the guides, all the qualifications. Um, they're a very big company in the cyber security scene. And in a competition called Cyber Threat 2019 Capture the Flag. They ran it in partnership with the National Cyber Security Center. They've kindly um, given us this challenge to do. So, a um, bit of a background to this competition. When, when all the competitors turned up for this uh, Cyber uh, Security Center competition, they were sat at their desks and there was some flyers there and there was this um, business card and nobody thought anything all of it they just thought it was advertising and the first question that they had to do before doing stuff like Wireshark is what is the Jupiter rocket uh, rockets CEO's chief executive officers date of birth 
So um, pause the stream when it comes back or take a screenshot, do whatever you need to do. But um, this is what I want you to do, is I want you to tell me the date of birth um, uh, of, of the CEO. So you're gonna have to try to find it. I suppose all the information you need is on that card. So hopefully I'll end, how long have I been? That's 25 minutes, so not much longer than I promised I would be. Um, I hope that you've found the, the stream useful. I'd like to thank the Owls for lending us their channel so that we can stream it. I'm sure that Kellen and Josh James would be more than pleased to have lent the channel to them. And who knows, perhaps we'll make a full on um, Hill House um, Twitch stream for the future. So I hope you found this useful. Thanks for viewing, thanks for following. Um, have, a, have a go of doing the Jupiter Rockets one. And um, uh, if you can all message me, if you enjoyed the stream, if you want more, let me know. Watch the stream back to go over the exercises. The stuff is on Moodle. Um, and until next time, I'm gonna say peace out.